News every 15 minutes, weather every 10, and sports twice an hour. News Talk KGVO, AM 1290, and now 101.5 FM. You're listening to Montana Morning with Peter Christian. A fast-moving grass fire causing some evacuations up in the Flathead. Good morning, everyone. It's Montana Morning. It is Thursday, August 6, 2015. Skies mostly clear, some high clouds. We have 54 degrees in Missoula. Our newscast this morning sponsored by the Mustard Seed Restaurant located in Southgate Mall. Authorities are evacuating homes as a fire burns in Evergreen. Flathead County Utter Sheriff Dave Lieb told the Flathead Beacon newspaper that five structures have burned in Wednesday's grass fire. The Daily Interlake newspaper reports at least one of the damaged structures is a home. Firefighters are attempting to prevent the flames from spreading to other houses, and a helicopter has been dropping water on the blaze. This was last evening. The cause not immediately clear. Evergreen's a small community about four miles northeast of Kalispell. Yellowstone County officials say a man whose body was found at the site of a 50-acre fire north of Laurel may have been trying to put out the fire when he was overcome. Sheriff Mike Linder says 66-year-old Leon Dudgeon died of smoke inhalation and burns. His badly burned body was found last week. He lived in the area. Cause of that fire is still under investigation. Lightning has been keeping firefighters busy all over the Northwest the past few days. Hamilton firefighters responded to two blazes that started late Tuesday, and they continue to burn in the Sapphire Mountains. Bitterwood National Forest Information Officer Johnny Lubke has details. The larger fire, the Mountain House fire, is 31 acres, and it is 100% contained. The smaller one, called St. Clair, they're guessing it to be about five acres right now. Um, they're still trying to get line around it, so they don't have an exact estimate of how big it is. Lubke says recent weather has actually been helpful. A terrain causing most of the difficulties. It is a little windy, but we're getting precip here in Hamilton. Um, getting a lot more here in the valley floor than they are up at the fire. Up at the fire, um, they've only been getting scattered sprinkles, so it's not really too big of an impact on them right now. Um, actually, the biggest concern with the St. Clair fire is that it's on a 90% slope. Um, so pretty steep for the firefighters to get around it. So far, firefighters have responded to 24 fires in the Bitterwood National Forest. The two new ones, actually the largest, as all the rest have been kept to less than two acres. More than 700 people gathered for the funeral of a prior couple shot to death last week after stopping to help what they believed was a stranded motorist. The Billings Gazette newspaper reports the funeral for 50-year-old Jason Shane Jr. and 47-year-old Tana Shane was held Tuesday at the Plenty Coup High School gym. Family member Bryce Huggs said every seat in the gym was taken. Later, Rybers had to stand for the nearby three-hour service. The Shanes had been married for 29 years and had five daughters and two sons. Their 24-year-old daughter, Jora Shane, was injured in the July 29th shooting. The preliminary hearing for a suspected shooter, 18-year-old Jesus Yezion Denise Mendoza of Warland, Wyoming, is set for Friday morning in federal court in Billings. Members of armed groups that call themselves constitutional advocates have arrived in Lincoln to support an owner during an ongoing dispute with the U.S. Forest Service concerning a federal mining claim. The Helena Independent Record newspaper reports that members of the group's Oath Keepers Pacific Patriot Network at Idaho 3% have come to Lincoln to begin a security operation at the White Hope Mine east of the city. The group say that the mine claim George Corneck holds predates 1955 regulations that granted surface rights to the Forest Service instead of falling under an 1872 law that would grant both surface and subsurface rights to Corneck. On Tuesday evening, Missoula police were called to a domestic disturbance at a motel on West Broadway where 22-year-old Casey Hansen was arrested and charged with felony assault with a weapon and misdemeanor partner or family member assault for allegedly choking his 19-year-old wife and threatening her with a knife. Police spokesman Travis Welsh has more. The investigation revealed that there had been an altercation that was physical. The male had suffered some minor wounds as a result of putting his wife in a chokehold and she was clawing at him to get away. The male was arrested and also his pocket knife was seized as evidence. Hansen's being held in the Missoula County Jail on $50,000 bond. He'll appear in Justice Court this afternoon. The uninsured population in Montana has decreased this year. Communications and Policy Director for Securities and Insurance Commissioner Monica Lindine, Jennifer McKee explains. We've done a survey as we do every year at the end of the national open enrollment period of the number of people who bought health insurance through what's called the individual market or who have insurance through Medicaid or some other program. And we sift through all that data and the this year, we discovered that an additional 23,246 
Montanans have health insurance this year, more so than last year. The percentage of Montanans continuing to lack health insurance has fallen to around 15 percent due to a few of the following reasons. There's lots of things. Um, it's, it's easier to buy health insurance now, and because of federal tax credits, it's more affordable for most for, for people than probably it's ever been. We know that um, of the folks who bought health insurance through healthcare.gov in 2015, about 85 percent of them got a federal tax credit to, to bring their, their monthly costs down. And that's probably the biggest driver is the fact that it's affordable. McKee says there will be a new open enrollment period this fall. Speaking of health, the University of Montana's Family Medicine Residency of Western Montana was awarded a $1.7 million grant from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. UM Family Medicine Professor Frank Reed explains the purpose of the grant. The focus of the grant is really to help develop team health care delivery, which is very much in the news now as we strive to improve the health of uh, all Americans, but our specific focus is on rural America and on training residents to become fully effective doctors. Reed says the first big meeting of rural communities and team training will probably take place this October or November. Last Friday, Ravalli County District Court Judge James Haynes ruled against county commissioners on their approval of a 600-unit subdivision called Legacy Ranch that would have been built near the Lee Metcalf Wildlife Refuge. Ravalli County Commissioner Jeff Burroughs says the decision will impact many subdivisions in Ravalli County and will force county planners to go back to the drawing board. There were a couple things that at the surface seemed to conflict with state statute, but it's the way we, we were trying to apply our subdivision regs consistently with how we've done it in the past. Um, for example, it was that, that you can't approve a preliminary plat further than three years out. Basically, statute reads the approval cannot be enforced for more than three calendar years. That's on a preliminary plat. Burroughs said the legacy ranch decision could impact planning across the state. I'm not sure that this decision isn't going to have a statewide effect because I, I, I know there's other counties who use this phasing process in their subdivision approval. So I'm not sure this isn't going to change how not only River Valley County, but county statewide do subdivision approvals. News Talk time now is 612. News Talk, KGVO. Missoula's official weather station. Mostly sunny skies today with our high temperatures in the mid-70s. Winds will be breezy with wind gusts as high as 30 miles per hour. Mostly clear tonight with our lows in the mid-40s. A meteorologist, Brooke Foster for Missoula's KECI 13.